All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, glad you could all uh, make your way across campus here. Um, my joke is that I hired a shuttle bus for the distant parking, and that is why it rained yesterday and not today. So, you know, that, that bus is going back and forth, mostly empty, but because everybody can walk and enjoy this weather. So uh, good to have you all here. Uh, we're going to get started with our program. Uh, so today's, uh, the agenda for this luncheon is uh, to present uh, a few awards first, uh, and then we will move on to our keynote speaker. Um, so uh, if we haven't met, by the way, I'm Jim Way. I'm executive director of the American Astronautical Society. Uh, so welcome again to this lunch. Um, thank you again very much to all of our sponsors. Uh, I'll read them off real quick. The Aerospace Corporation, Blue Origin, The Boeing Company, Dynetics, Jacobs, Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, Lockheed Martin, Maxar, Northrop Grumman, SAIC, SpaceX, Teledyne Brown Engineering, and the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Also our media sponsor, Space News. Uh, thank you very, very much for all your support of this event. We couldn't do it without you. And of course, thank you. Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. And we work very closely in partnership with these other organizations, obviously, NASA Marshall Space Flight Center, the National Space Club of Huntsville, and once again, the University of Alabama in Huntsville. So before we get to our keynote speaker, we're going to present some very significant AAS awards uh, to recognize the stars and the leaders of the space industry. Our nominations window for the 2022 awards is closing on Monday. So if anything here today kind of triggers, oh yeah, that person could be recognized, you know, they, they deserve to be recognized, please don't hesitate to visit our website, astronautical.org and uh, submit a nomination uh, for anybody that you think deserves to be in the spotlight. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna bring up Alan DeLuna, our president to start with our first award. Good. I don't have to do the slides. Thank you. So the Patty Grace Smith Award is going to Greg Barton. Um, where is Pete Paisley? Pete. Pete Paisley is going to receive it for him. The AAS Patty Grace Smith Award is presented each year in recognition of Patty's commitment to the development of young professionals. This year's award is presented to Greg Barton for his tremendous support of young professionals mm -hmm. as group lead of the Earth, Moon, Mars Guidance, Navigation and Control Group at Draper's Houston office. He has hired, mentored, and nurtured multiple young professionals into strategic leadership roles within the human spaceflight community in support of NASA's Johnson Space Center. Greg is recognized for his find, finding budding talent in students and young professionals and helping them to grow into strategic leadership roles within the human spaceflight community. Accepting this year's Patty Grace Smith Award for Greg Barton is Pete Paisley from Draper. Pete, you have some words you'd like to say? Yeah. Thanks, Alan. Uh, so Greg uh, asked me to send his apologies. He couldn't be here in person today. Uh, he wanted to extend his thanks to AAS uh, for the award and uh, also thank his Draper colleagues that nominated him. Drake. Greg's a tremendous mentor, had been at the lab for a number of years. He retired recently, uh, but um, there are a lot of young professionals who are seasoned veterans now, thanks to Greg. Okay, our next award is the AAS Neil Armstrong Space Flight Achievement Award. It is given annually for outstanding achievements as a crew, a crew member, or a team. This year's Armstrong Award recognizes the Human Exploration Development and Operations Office Payload and Missions Operations Division for their contributions to human spaceflight as the Payload and Science Operations Team for the International Space Station. This team has been responsible for the integrated science operations onboard ISS for over 20 years to the benefit of all humankind and the advancement of human exploration missions. The long-term efforts of this singular team have directly contributed to the science success enabling human exploration missions to the moon and beyond in benefit of all humankind. 
Accepting for the team is Dwight Mosby, Manager of the Payload and Mission Operations Director's Office at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Dwight. Thank you. Um, first off, thank you um, for recognizing the team. We have quietly been getting the job done for the past 22 years. Um, when people talk about mission control, they automatically think about Johnson Space Center, but there is another mission control. We are responsible for a lot of the science success, science operations that have benefited humanity in the past uh, two decades. Um, and I think what's most amazing about this recognition is during the time when we had the evacuation order um, for the pandemic, we saw a lot of the a lot of the uh, employees across the center go home, work remote. We still had a mission to do. We still came in every day. We still interfaced in a face-to-face -face fashion, and we accomplished our goals. So thank you for the recognition. All right, the Space Technology Award is going to Christopher McLean. The AAS Space Technology Award recognizes an outstanding achievement in space technology. This year's Space Technology Award is presented to Christopher McLean of Ball Aerospace. Chris is being recognized for his technical guidance and exemplary, tireless, and immensely productive efforts on the, profound, the profoundly unique green propellant infusion mission, which successfully deployed a non-toxic monopropellant providing longer mission durations additional maneuverability, increased payload volume, and simplified space vehicle launch processing compared to hydrazine. Chris has been working in propulsion for 30 years, and this is the fifth time he's been involved in the flight implementation of an advanced in-space propulsion technology. So we present the AAS Space Technology Award to Chris McLean for your technical leadership across the groundbreaking efforts at, at Ball. Thank you, Chris. Yes, you, sir. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to give a few brief words here. Back in uh, 96, I was at the IEPC in Cleveland, and um, the future uh, Dan Golden said, I'm going to speak briefly, and for 45 minutes, we listened to him talk about going to uh, Europa. But, um, oh, I'm really, this is really a huge award for me, and I appreciate it. There were so many people involved. I want to just take a couple of brief minutes and acknowledge a lot of contribution here. Um, this program, we took a TRL-4 technology, took it through the Valley of Death, blew it successfully, and had an incredible program. Um, we had a three-year bathtub. Overall, this was a 10-year effort on, on our part to get this done. The program was funded out of NASA STMD. Jeff Sheehy uh, was the... Uh, the lead, the technical lead for us out there. I want to thank him for his mentorship. Uh, program was managed out of NASA Marshall Spice uh, Space Flight Center by Tim Smith, who I'm seeing for breakfast tomorrow, a great guy. Um, we won this award, Ball won this award, really, because we had a platform um, that we were looking to do on a small SAC, get ourselves more into the small SAC community, and we had uh, a, we, a BCP-100 bus, we call it now, it had flown twice on a couple of Air Force programs. We took that uh, that bus and through the course of this program actually commercialized it in the sense for ball, which led to some wins like XP and Sphere X and even some larger programs are doing now. This ball has been recognized in the ability to do these small programs. Um, the technology that we were demonstrating was a uh, high performance monopropellant developed by AFRL Edwards. Um, first monopropellant, first new propellant that really had gone through range safety since the early 70s. And we got some guys out of retirement to help us get some of the the factors of safety developed and some of the materials done. I'm going to read briefly through all the people that contributed, and by no means is this everyone. And uh, I want to thank everyone uh, as I'm going through here. Aerojet Rocketdyne, Joe Cassidy back there, first guy I ever melted tungsten with, and uh, back in the day on the Arcjet work. Um, Aerojet, Aerojet uh, led the thruster development and uh, built the payload uh, in conjunction with myself. I had worked there, so uh, my background in this technology was very helpful in making this successful. Um, uh, NASA, I want to talk about the NASA Center, especially here, because uh, early in my career, I worked for NASA Glenn. Anyone from NASA Glenn out there, they are the best group of people I've worked with in my career. I'm not knocking any of the other NASA centers by far, but uh, they were great for me. And they came in on the program because we had a, we had a new propellant that was putting out 60% water. And what does that do to a spacecraft? So I've got those guys involved. We got funding. They did plume analysis, plume modeling, CFD. 
Um, and uh, we uh, brought an engine out there. The uh, Ohio Aerospace Institute participated doing experimental photography. We did modeling. And then we had a stump compass study group out there to look at where this mission would fit in. Great work with NASA Glenn. Um, Jim Free at the time was center director, funded a center of excellence for green propellant out there as part of this effort as well. NASA Kennedy was involved, of course. We were figuring out how to get a new propellant in through range safety, how we were to get the safety levels down. We loaded the spacecraft in uh, lab coats. We had it dropped off the back of a pickup truck at the processing building. If anybody's ever fueled a spacecraft with hydrogen or MMH, you know uh, what, how amazing uh, that was. We actually spilled some. The safety guy just says, okay, wipe it up and toss it in this drum. I mean, that was the level of, of uh, this high-performance fuel. Um, NASA Goddard got involved um, uh, later in the program. Um, Crystal Johnson was very supportive. They uh, modified an old biprop lad so we could do a flat sat. The repellent's very viscous, and so... Anyway, we had a lot of development to do and looking at the, uh, the technology, water hammer and all that stuff. Uh, we even worked with Swiri to do a slosh model in the propellant tank due to the density. Uh, turns out it's a very funky fuel, but uh, we were able to uh, characterize that, which was needed to be done. Air, Air Farrell Edwards uh, had developed the fuel. Um, they got involved with the range safety, the fueling, the processing. They built the fueling equipment, all the specifications. They provided fuel to all the NASA centers and uh, the people that were involved in this. And finally, once we got on orbit, we flew on uh, was one of 13 secondaries on the STP-2 uh, Falcon Heavy, which was an Air Force uh, qualification ride. It was quite a Christmas tree of all these uh, CubeSats and the three Esper rings on there. Um, that was a great experience. SMC did the flight ops under our direction, uh, under Ball's direction. Um, and the last couple of things to mention on this program that were kind of amazing. We got on orbit. We had, before we got on orbit, we added three Air Force Academy payloads to one side of the bus. Um, a couple of plasma weathers. One was SOS, which is a GPS spacecraft, the spacecraft tech demo we got in there. We also put an IMLI technology on there that is now TRL-9 and is being used on uh, at Ball on Neo Surveyor, is being used on Roman, and is actually being used in some of our NASA, NASA national defense programs. But we realized on orbit that these plume sensors were seeing some of the hydrogen plume coming off the engines, and we took that data, and I got DARPA to work with NASA Glenn, post the program to uh, anchor their models and get some refinement on the CFD. And on the final, as we started to do re-entry, we were able to retain, since we went into a perigee only lowering orbit, at the end of the mission, we were starting to uh, tumble, but we got enough data to enhance some of the SMC re-entry codes. So overall, I think we got an insane amount of science out of this data. And I said before, I appreciated NASA offering me the opportunity to shepherd this money. And uh, I did my best for them. And I think this represents that. So thank you very much. Good job. Our next award is uh, a very prominent AAS award, the AAS Carl Sagan Award. Um, this award is given to an individual who has demonstrated leadership in research or policies advancing exploration of the cosmos. The Carl Sagan Memorial is, Award is uh, generously sponsored by SAIC. Uh, so here to uh, do the recognition is uh, Charlie Segemiller, Senior Director of Business Development and also the AAS Vice President of Technical Committees. Charlie. Well, thank you very much. On behalf of SAIC, we're very pleased to be a part of the AAS uh, awards process. And as mentioned in the previous awardees, individuals are recognized because of the team's accomplishments. The teams usually need a significant leader that inspires them to achieve great things. And so today's recipient, Nicola Fox, is such that individual. So if you look at her career and you look, and I've read a little bit about your bio, you began early as a toddler. Well, actually not even a toddler because her father put her in front of the television to watch the Apollo 11 landing. You might have been six, eight months old. Yeah. But she's been in the cosmos ever since. And with her significant achievements, and that's what we're recognizing today, she's offered, uh, of course, authored numerous scientific articles and papers and delivered science presentations. But I find extremely fascinating Hope that she makes a couple of comments about her work with the solar orbiter missions and the NASA's Parker Solar Probe where through that work and through her leadership as the project scientist, put us into truly touching a star. So our award today is Dr. Nicola Fox.
Thank you so much. This is such an, an amazing uh, honor. And um, I'll, I'll share with you that when I actually got the email telling me that I had won the award, my first thought was, oh, they must want me to write a nomination package for somebody else. And um, I actually forwarded the email down to my husband and I was like, I think I just won an award. Could you read it and let me know? Um, and uh, the day I actually got the award, I got it about five minutes after I got the news that Gene Parker had died, Gene Parker of Parker Solar Probe. And I couldn't shake this feeling that somehow he'd gifted it to me from heaven. It was like one last thing that he would do for me. And I sort of thought a lot about people who'd really made an impact on my career. And I realized with great sadness that some of them had died and it was too late to tell them what an amazing thing they'd done. And so I vowed I would never do that again. And so I went, you know, I actually put together a little slide with pictures of all the people that um, had really inspired me and I sent it to them. So they actually knew what it meant. And so, you know, sadly, no longer here to see that slide, um, Dr. Gene Parker, of course, and the late great Mario Acuna from Goddard, who most of you will know. Um, Bob Hoffman also from, from Goddard, who sadly died last weekend. Um, and then from the Applied Physics Lab, Barry Mock, Mike Rushkevich, and from SMD, of course, my boss, of course, my boss. Um, and and um, uh, Paul Hertz, Laurie Glaze, Kathy Leaders, people that really inspire me. Um, their friends, their colleagues, their mentors. And, you know, I think that there are two sort of key things um, that, that help you when, you when you're a leader. One is, of course, the fact that you lead great teams. And I've had tremendous, um, you know, fortune to lead great teams. And the Parker Solar Probe team, um, there are many of you in the room who had something to do with Parker Solar Probe. And it is the coolest, hottest mission under the sun. Um, and... Uh, while I get you know, excited about um, all of our science, the one closest to my heart is Solar Probe. Um, and, uh, you know, and also the, the people I lead today, um, the incredibly hardworking, fabulous team that is the Heliophysics Division uh, at the Science Mission Directorate. I also have the world's best deputy, that is Peg Luce. Um, and no, you can't have her. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and just all the amazing things we do and the whole heliophysics community and just what an amazing group of people they are. And the other thing that's so important is to have an environment in which you can thrive. And there are a number of factors that I feel really um, impact that for me. One, of course, is, is um, Thomas Sabukin. And the good thing about when your boss says they're going to leave, you can really tell, tell people what you think of them. And so, Thomas, buckle up. Um, <laughs> um, it is, it is such an honor and a pleasure to work for Thomas. He totally sets an environment in which we are supported and allowed to thrive. And so, you know, he's by far the best boss I've ever had. It's been a blast and I still, I'm in denial that you're actually leaving. Um, the, other, the other thing I, is, is so um, great and I'd like to thank is just the whole NASA agency. It is such an amazing honor to come to work every day and work for NASA. We do great things. We do amazing things in science. We, you know, image the, the cosmos. We, we land on, on other planetary bodies. We, we study climate. We study um, the impact of life sciences in orbit. And of course, we touch the sun. Um, and, you know, just to be part of the moon to Mars, you know, we're going to return humans to the moon. We're going to go on to Mars. If that doesn't want to make you get up in the morning and go to work, I don't know what does. And I, I, I just want to finish by um, thanking also and acknowledging an incredibly supportive family, uh, my husband who makes sacrifices so that I can do what I love every day, and my two kids, James and Darcy, who anchor me all the time. And it's actually Darcy's 13th birthday today. And yes, and I said to her, are you sure I'm okay going away? And she's like, yes, yes, mommy, just be home for basketball on Friday. And <laughs> And she said, it's really important that you go. She said, I want you to go, accept this award and tell everybody, thank you for the award. And so, thank you for the award. All right. 
adjusting all of our papers. Amazing amount of paper it takes to do a, a conference like this. So now the next reward, I think the last award for the day is the AAS Spaceflight Award. It's going to Tori Bruno. The AAS Spaceflight Award is given annually to the person whose outstanding achievements and efforts have contributed most significantly to the advancement of spaceflight and space exploration. The Space Father Award is the highest award bestowed by AAS. Over the past 30 years, Tori Bruno, President and Chief Executive Officer of United Launch Alliance, has been a tireless advocate for the industry, sharing his passion for the capabilities of current space technology and his vision of a self-sustaining human presence in space. Furthermore, Tori is a strong communicator on space and his social media presence is legendary worldwide and is an inspiration to many. I'm going to start doing Twitter. <laughs> Tori's commitment to continued improvement, launch success, and expertise continues to positively influence the industry for the next generation of rocket scientists and space pioneers. Under Tori Bruno's leadership, United Launch Alliance is shaping the future of space launch by making it more affordable and accessible. Over the past 30 years, Tori has managed and initiated critical defense and space launch programs that form the background of modern infrastructure and provide a foundation for the expansion of future space capabilities. Tori, come on up, sir. You want to, you want to talk first? Well, gosh, first I want to thank the university for hosting us. This is wonderful. I want to thank Marshall because without Marshall, we would not be developing our Vulcan rocket. You are making tremendous contributions and especially AAS, the premier professional organization in this field. I don't even know how long AAS has been going. I think there's a rumor that it's over a hundred years. This is just a tremendous honor. I am so flattered to be recognized in this way, but I have to tell you all that the true honor I've always felt about this work that we do has been working with all of you, the smartest, most dedicated people in our industry, in our government, in our professional societies and universities who are helping us to understand our universe and our place within it. No nobler work could possibly exist. And I will say today that also discoveries that will change our human destiny to one of a post-scarcity human future. But that's a talk for another time. So thank you all tremendously. You know, I, I've been doing this so long. You know, ULA has 154 launches. For me personally, it's more like 400. And I'm often asked on social media and other events, Tori, what's your favorite launch? And I always say, well, you know, I love all my children. But Nikki, I think you know which is my favorite. Oh. Thank you all. <laughs>